says, um, Dear Leona, uh -huh. I'm in a book called Dear Mr. Blueberry. Uh -huh. I'm upstairs in fiction on the third shelf behind the duck. Love, Emily. Huh. Oh, who's Emily? <gasps> I don't know. <laughs> find the duck, we find Emily. Oh, huh? all huh? right, let's go. All right. <laughs> Sir, quack. could you move over a little tiny bit over there? We need to get to those shelves. Quack, quack, quack. Okay. Um, um, um. One, two, three. Uh, <gasps> oh, oh, oh. Find it, Lionel. Find it. Okay, all right. Let's see. Um, dear Mr. Blueberry. Dear Mr. Blueberry. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that's uh, it. <laughs> hey, dear Mr. Blueberry. By Simon James. Oh, oh, let's read it, Lionel. Let's read it, read it, read it. It must right. be kind of magic. Wow. Dear Mr. Blueberry, I love whales very much, and I think I saw one in my pond today. Please send me some information on whales, as I think you might be hurt. Love, Emily. <laughs> Dear Emily, here are some details about whales. I don't think you'll find it was a whale you saw because whales don't live in ponds, but in salt water. Yours sincerely, your teacher, Mr. Blueberry. Mr. Blueberry, I am now putting salt into the pond every day before breakfast. And last night, I saw my whale smile. I think he is feeling better. Do you think he might be lost? Love, Emily. Dear Emily, uh, please don't put any more salt in the pond. I'm sure your parents won't be pleased. I'm afraid there can't be a whale in your pond because whales don't get lost. They always know where they are in the oceans. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. Dear Mr. Blueberry, tonight I'm very happy because I saw my whale jump up and spurt lots of water. He looked blue. Does this mean he might be a blue whale? Love, Emily. P.S. What can I feed him with? Dear Emily, blue whales are blue, and they eat tiny shrimp-like creatures that live in the sea. However, I must tell you that a blue whale is much too big to live in your pond. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. P.S. Perhaps it is a blue goldfish? Dear Mr. Blueberry, Last night I read your letter to my whale. Afterward, he let me stroke his head. It was very exciting. I secretly took him some crunched up cornflakes and breadcrumbs. 
This morning I looked in the pond and they were all gone. I think I shall call him Arthur. What do you think? Love, Emily. Dear Emily, I must point out to you quite forcibly now that in no way could a whale live in your pond. You may not know that whales are migratory, which means they travel great distances each day. I am sorry to disappoint you. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. Dear Mr. Blueberry, Tonight, I'm a little sad. Arthur has gone. I think your letter made sense to him, and he has decided to be migratory again. Love, Emily. Dear Emily, please don't be too sad. It really was impossible for a whale to live in your pond. Perhaps when you are older, you would like to sail the oceans, studying and protecting whales. Yours sincerely, Mr. Blueberry. Dear Mr. Blueberry, it's been the happiest day. I went to the beach and you'll never guess. But I saw Arthur. I called to him and he smiled. I knew it was Arthur because he let me stroke his head. I gave him some of my sandwich. And then we said goodbye. I shouted that I loved him very much. And I hope you don't mind. I said you loved him too. Love, Emily. And Arthur. The end. Oh, you must really like those books. Mama, 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 we just Mama, read the best book. This character named Emily wrote me a note that led us to it. Wow, that's yeah. cool. Uh, just a minute, sweetie. I'm helping someone. Okay. 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 That book is due back next Friday. I hope you enjoy it. Oh, thank you. I am certain that I will. <laughs> Bye, Mr. Blueberry. <gasps> Mr. Blueberry? Mr. Blueberry, come, come back. back. Next! Next! <laughs> Excellent! What's next on Between the Lions? A whale of a good time with the letters W-H. Whoa! Whale. W-H. Wha. W-H. Wha. Whip. Whisk. Whistle. It's game time, and welcome to the Blending Bowl. I'm Terry Bradshaw, and I'll be doing the play-by-play -play today for this incredible showdown. In red, we have Team... <laughs> and in white, we have Team Earl. And there's the kickoff! That's about it, folks. And until next time for the Blending Bowl, I'm Cherry Bradshaw. Hey, thanks for watching. And now, a word from Mr. Fred Newman. Whoosh. 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 If you were... If you were a blue whale, you wouldn't be a fish. You'd be a mammal. Mammals have mothers who feed their babies milk. Mammals live on land and in the ocean. If you were a baby blue whale, 
you drink 100 gallons of milk a day. When you got bigger, you'd eat a shrimp-like creature called krill. You could never eat just one. You'd eat five tons a day. If you were a blue whale, you'd hold your breath and dive. You'd know how to suck down krill, but not the water. After 20 minutes, you'd take a breather. You'd breathe out through the biggest nostrils in the world, also known as blowholes. You would grow until you were as long as three school buses. You'd be the biggest animal on Earth head to tail. That is, if you happen to be a blue whale. Flying off the shelf once again, it's the continuing daring and dangling adventures of Cliffhanger! Today's adventure, number 3,787, Cliffhanger and the Mammoth Whale. Cliffhanger, hanging from a cliff, and that's why he's called Cliffhanger. Excuse me, excuse me! We find Cliffhanger where we left him last, hanging from a cliff. Can't hold on much longer. Suddenly, in the water below, he catches sight of a mammoth whale. A whale? Cliff grabs his trusty survival manual from his backpack and using his expert decoding skills, begins to read. If you catch sight of a whale, and it blasts water from its blowhole, jump on the blast fast. Whoa, what a blast! I'm free at last! Is this it? Has Cliffhanger's life of grasping a branch passed at last? No! Another blast from the whale sends Cliff back past his branch. This is a blast! And that's why he's called Cliffhanger. Can't hold on much longer. W-H. Oh dear, I, I am so sorry, children. I am not that Mr. Blueberry. Huh? No, see, that Mr. Blueberry is Chester Blueberry, the scientist that knows all about whales. Ah. Oh dear. No, I, I am Dirk Blueberry, the monkey who knows all about motorcycle racing. Huh? Huh? Sorry to disappoint you. Toodaloo. Huh. Vroom, 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 vroom. Ah, You should write a book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now, an important announcement. If you want an iguana, watch this. All right, who wrote this? I want an iguana. <laughs> So cool. What? I'm gonna get a helicopter. Oh, cool. But, but how? Well, by asking mom for one in a note. Dear mom, can I please have a helicopter? I've wanted one my entire life. Love, Lionel. Oh, <laughs> oh hey, mom. Mm -hmm. Mom. Hey, I wrote oh, you a note. Oh, Lionel, that's so <gasps> sweet. Thank you. Look, I'll welcome. put it here in my toolbox and I'll read it when I get a chance, okay? Cool. Okay, see you later, Cubs. Yeah. <laughs> it won't be long now. <laughs> Just writing a note won't work, you know. <laughs> oh, yes, it will. I got the idea from this great book I just read called I Want an Iguana. <gasps> oh, 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 read it, read it, read it, read it. Okay. I Want an Iguana by Karen Kaufman Orloff, illustrated by David Catro. Dear Mom, I know you don't think I should have Mikey Gulligan's baby iguana when he moves, but here's why I should. If I don't take it, he goes to Stinky, and Stinky's dog Lurch will eat it. You don't want that to happen, do you? Sign your 
sensitive son, Alex. Dear Alex, I'm glad you're so compassionate, but I doubt that Stinky's mother will let Lurch get into the iguana's cage. Nice try, though. Love, Mom. Dear Mom, did you know that iguanas are really quiet? And they're cute, too. I think they are much cuter than hamsters. Love, your adorable son, Alex. Dear Alex, tarantulas are quiet, too, but I wouldn't want one as a pet. By the way, that iguana of Mikey's is uglier than Godzilla. Just thought I'd mention it. Love, Mom. Dear Mom, you would never even have to see the iguana. I'll keep his cage in my room on the dresser next to my soccer trophies. Plus, he's so small. I bet you'll never even know he's there. Love and a zillion and one kisses. Alex. Dear Alex, iguanas can grow to be over six feet long. You won't have enough space in your whole room, much less on your dresser, with or without your trophies. Love, Mom. Dear Mom, it takes 15 years for an iguana to get that big. Mikey told me. I'll be married by then, and probably living in my own house. Love, your smart and mature kid, Alex. Dear Alex, how are you going to get a girl to marry you when you own a six-foot-long reptile? Love, your concerned mother. Dear Mom, forget the girl. I need a new friend now. This iguana can be the brother I've always wanted. Love, your lonely child. Dear Alex, you have a brother. Love, Mom. Dear Mom, I know I have a brother, but he's just a baby. What fun is that? If I had an iguana, I could teach you tricks and things. Ethan doesn't do tricks. He just burps and poops. Love, grossed out Alex. Dear Alex, how do I know you're ready for a pet? Remember what happened when you took home the class fish? Love, Mom. Dear Mom, if I knew the fish was going to jump into the spaghetti sauce, I never would have taken the cover off the jar. Love, your son who has learned his lesson. Yes, iguanas don't like spaghetti. Dear Alex, let's say I let you have the iguana on a trial basis. What exactly would you do to take care of it? Love, Mom. Dear Mom, I would feed him every day. He eats lettuce. And I would make sure he had enough water. And I would clean his cage when it got messy. Love, Responsible Alex. P.S. What's a trial basis? Dear Alex, a trial basis means Dad and I see how well you take care of him for a week or two before we decide if you can have him forever. Remember, Stinky and Lurch are waiting. Love, Mom. P.S. If you clean his cage as well as you clean your room, you're in trouble. Yeah. Dear Mom, I'll really, really, really try to clean my room and the iguana's cage. Also, listen to this. I'll pay for the lettuce with my allowance. I mean, how much can one baby iguana eat anyway? <laughs> Love, Alex, the financial wizard. Are you sure you want to do this, Alex? 
Yes, Mom! I want a iguana! Please! Dear Alex, look on your dresser. Love, Mom. You see, couple of notes back and forth, he gets an iguana. Huh? Couple of notes back and forth, I get a helicopter. Oh. <laughs> well, wow. gee, I hope it works. Oh, yeah. Special delivery for uh, um, uh, uh, a Lionel Lion. Oh, that's me. Lionel yeah. Lion? That's me. Oh, that's, that's me. Also. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> cool. Hey, anyway, we... huh. <laughs> it's from Mom. Look at that. It says, uh, Dear Lionel, where would you park it? Love, Mom. <laughs> Hmm? Gee, good question. <laughs> hmm. Hey, wait right here. Hmm? I'll send one back to her. Very good. <clears throat> All about everything, one thing at a time. And now the information hen. Ah, welcome. What thing will we learn today? Turn, 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 Stop! Pets! All about pets. Pets are animal friends that we love and who love us. There are all kinds of pets, like doggies. Coochie, coochie, goo. Hello, doggy. Oh, and cats. Meow. And iguanas. Not a lot of people have iguanas. Cool looking. And... A piece of toast? Well, that's not a pet, but it does make a great snack. Oh, that's all for... All about everything, <laughs> one thing at a time. It's Polly and the Pirate. Hi, I'm Polly, I'm a parent. I'm Polly, I'm a pirate. We search for treasure shouting yo-ho-ho. -ho. We think it's jolly that both our names are Polly. Yes, we're Polly and the Pirate. That's Polly and the Parrot. And here's our show. <laughs> We find Polly and the Pirate yet again in search of treasure. Today, it's a remote-controlled helicopter. A helicopter? I can't wait to fly it. Read the map, Polly. Where to today? It says, walk to the closest cactus and grab the note. After you take the needles out of your thumb, hand Polly the note. The note says, open the mailbox and take out the second note. Take the note from the iguana who lives inside. Ahem, dig for treasure next to the mailbox. Rock! Treasure! It's a helicopter! Ah, made of bird seed! As another day of treasure hunting comes to an end, Holly and the pirate head back out to sea. Maybe next time there'll be something for me! Yo ho ho! Ah! Riding back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Leona, I pretty much said every possible thing I can to get that helicopter. I'm out of words. 
<laughs> I'm done. So, oh well. <laughs> Another note mm. from your your mom. Yeah, thanks. Woof. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 read it, Lino. Read it. <gasps> Might as well. Yeah. Dear Lionel. The monkey behind you has your helicopter. Love, Mom. The monkey behind me has my helicopter. <gasps> Commence liftoff. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh he's hungry. You can do it. Oh, 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 oh. You're gonna love this. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, let's see. Dear Mama. I have always wanted a pet giraffe. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, let's run here. Um, here. Yo, check it out. We're going surfing without a board, dudes. <laughs> okay, because we're surfing between the lion's website. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go to pbskids.org.